Uh, you know what? We'll take that. And I guess we'll take that. So you've just watched me destroy your entire squad. Plus all your reinforcements. Kind of lame, dude. Kind of lame. Now, unfortunately, our Warthog really is a little bit frazzled. It's not fantastic, is it? But, you know. Shame we can't use one of those water canisters and put the fire out. Whatever. This thing's going to have to go back to the chop shop. Uh... We have the. The carrier just wants to wave a pod. They're inbound on your position. This is not great. We now have uh, enemy drop pods, which is a cool little addition. You can get elites that just uh, get launched from the carriers, like the ODST. Right, he's done. Right, come on, work on that ghost. Get that ghost out of here. Now, what we can actually do is come in here and we have some rockets. But before that, we have the next terminal. Camber was a major manufacturing center for UNSC fleet materials with a population of 5.6 million. After discovering Camber's location, Batami penetrated the early warning perimeter without alerting UNSC forces and began his ground and orbital attacks before most of the planet knew they were in danger. While 17 of his ships bombed key defensive positions, Batami led a group of elites in a personal assault on UNSC System HQ. One of the first units to engage Batami was the 3rd Battalion Reserves, who were so unprepared for the arrival of the Covenant forces that Batami found them unarmed and defenseless. In an unexpected display of what appears to be honor, Batami allowed the third to finish gearing up before engaging them in combat. While we've had multiple reports of a strict system of honor and ritual behavior followed by the elites within the company, this is the first recorded example of such honor being shown to human opponents. But even given the chance to defend themselves, the 3rd Battalion losses were complete. Batami continued his campaign across many human systems, culminating in his most devastating blow against the UNSC at Reach. Yeah, the terminals in Halo 2 are really good. They really do fill in the backstory for Valadim. The Arbiter. Ooh. Right, well, looks like we've got some soldiers here that are a little bit panicked. Well, that's okay. Now, one of love it or hate it. One of the new um, upgrades for the rocket launcher in Halo 2, homing missiles. Love it or hate it. Because man did it suck penises in uh, multiplayer. But, you know, in the campaign it was a lot of fun. It made sense. That the uh, human weaponry was, you know, sh we should have homing missiles and things like that. All right. So let's knock these guys back. Oh, see him. He was like teabagging. Come on, baby. Get fucked. Now, again, love it or hate it as well. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, nice. We're out of rockets. 
There are more rockets downstairs. Come on, baby. Don't want our hog to be destroyed. Yeah, so love it or hate it, if you leave a hog in this game, um, the AI will kind of take over and drive around in somewhat of a holding pattern around, which is kind of interesting. Um, but sometimes they will just yeet themselves into Narnia as well. Ooh, hoo, hoo. So it can be quite difficult to uh, actually find them, catch up with them. Now, remember um, how a lot of the plasma weapons from the Covenant are disposable slash rechargeable. Yep, you'll usually find them attached to these contraptions here. And if you pull them off these, they will be on 100% health because... 100% health, 100% ammo. Because these are basically the uh, charging stations for the plasma. Okay, so where's my hog at? There it is. So that was very advanced AI for the time. Um, there was a lot of talk at the time. Oh, this is a fresh, a fresh hog. Excellent. There was a lot of talk at the time about the AI uh, actually being scrapped for driving vehicles. But in the end, it was, you know, just about perfected. It's full of rats, if you know what I mean. But it beats swimming. Well, we can handle a few rats. Where's the other hog? Is the other hog coming? I think the other hog's chilling. Right, let's go. We can flush out some rats. I've been analyzing the Covenant tactical chatter. They're surprised, confused. I don't think they expected us to be here. Not you and me. All of us. Humanity on Earth. Odd, I know, but it does help explain why they came here with such a small fleet. Oh, there's the other hog catching up. Yeah, so Cortana's pretty much bang on in her assessment there. Um, Covenant didn't realize that Earth was humanity's homeworld. Alright, let's get these guys going in some crossfire. Yeah, they ain't surviving this sort of firepower. We got them locked down. Oh, I think that's actually a fresh hog. It's not burning. I don't know what happened to our one. Oh, we got buggers. Eyes up, guys. Eyes up. Yeah, buggers with needlers are not fun. We all saw it, dude. Yep. That's the more advanced gun turret. the Covenant have. It's got kind of like a shield attached. Because Covenant and their shields, they love them. Just push through these guys. <laughs> yes. Die. Die, motherfucker, die. Well, that's not good. That's a scarab. That's the thing we saw shoot up our pelican dropships in the beginning. What's a scarab? Well, it's a heavy covenant assault platform. And um, interesting fun fact about the scarab. It is biomechanical. It's actually the, uh, well, basically the, the hunters are made up of a sentient bunch of worms called Legoko or something something like that um, and they form into creatures and uh, they're like a hive mind and they can form into uh, bipedal creatures and mobs and basically take whatever shape they want because it's just a hive of worms yeah so a scarab is a big hive of those things covered in armor you right there dude what's going on here 
No, just just chilling, just hiding. Okay, looks like you guys have got it locked down pretty tight here. You know what? Hey, you, you're happy. I'm happy. Yeah, you can have that, dude. I want my guy riding shotgun. I want him to have a sniper rifle. Ooh. What did you guys do? How did you guys stack your hog? I mean, honestly. What did you do to this thing? There you go. You're welcome. No, d no, no. Um, driving seat? Driver's seat? You wanna you wanna drive and provide backup? All right, whatever. Okay, at least we got our sniper on board now, and that is a good time. That is not necessarily a good time. Ooh, yeah, they are transports, and they are quite nasty. Right, oh, he's he's worked out how to drive again. Yeah, so that's a transport for the Covenant. And we're going to go hunt down a few of them. There they are. It's a convoy of transports. Not on our watch. Come on, boys. The Covenant must be trying to regroup. Don't let them. Oh, we're not going to let them. Don't worry. Come on. Take that turret out. There we go. Well, these things are reasonably strong. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you can see how tough these things actually are. It will eventually go down. I do mean eventually. <laughs> Okay, that's weird. Oh, there we go. Ooh, there we go. It's gone. Yeah, they must have really dialed up how much damage it can take. Yeah, we need that turret gone. He's gone. Cool. Hey, we have our other hog friend. Yeah, so the Warthog is actually classed as heavy recon. Um, you know, it isn't technically a light jeep or a light vehicle. It is a heavy recon vehicle. The humans do have light recon vehicles. But we'll see those later on. But yeah, I do like the idea of the Hog. It's just this... Very heavy, very armoured monster of a vehicle. Right, that's another one done. Don't die, guys. Don't die. Come on. Come on. There we go. He's gunless. Going to be gutless next. Come on, baby. Come on. Keep chipping away at it. You know what, I guess... Oh, there we go. He's gone. Oh, we got ghosts coming. Watch that crossfire, guys. Oh, haha. <laughs> I love it when the AI fucks up like that. You see him completely crash and stack it. No, we're going to lose that other hog at this rate. Come on, get that. Kill that ghost. That ghost is gone. That ghost is gone. Okay. Wow, these hogs have done some serious work. Stay away from the exploding host. Uh, ghost. Stay... Nope. Nope. Don't. Really? So instead of staying away from it, they decided to drive right into it. And he's having... He's having some difficulties. I'm going to leave this guy alone now, because I think he's probably going to get us killed. You right there, fella? You know, there are easier ways to get around this thing, right? 
I don't think he's. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be following us. He's fine. He's he's performed his duty admirably. And we're at the end of the warthog run now, anyway. Now this is a fun level. <laughs> Thanks for the tank. He never gets me anything. Oh, I know what the ladies like. <laughs> ladies like armored vehicles. Or oh, ladies like grinding treads. Well, maybe. Right, let's go. This is the new Scorpion. It has a much much more accurate machine gun. If you remember back to Halo Combat Evolved, the machine gun was basically useless. Yeah, now it's actually pretty bloody accurate. Right, let's roll. Oh, smoke that bastard. Right now, we definitely want to stay away from exploding vehicles. Yeah, the coaxial gun on this thing is now monstrous. I'm not sure why, like, even now, I don't know why they made it so useless in the first game. Here we go, here we go, here we go now. <laughs> Indeed, Marine, we've got artillery coming in. And there's that uh, Covenant carrier there, which is not something you want to see. Because there is not very many human ships that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Covenant carrier. In fact, there are exactly zero ships in the human fleet that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Covenant carrier. No, you need an entire human fleet to take on a Covenant carrier. And even then, success is anything but guaranteed. And even if you do successfully take it down, uh, you're probably going to lose half, three quarters, nearly all of your, your ships. There were large human carriers, massive things. Um, the super heavy... I can't remember what the, the actual class was called but that the humans kind of did away with them because before the war there was only like three or four of them um, but although they were heavily armed they were very large targets and you know the the trouble in space with, for the humans was you would probably get one good volley of Mac fire off um, and then whilst you were reloading and rearming um, your main Mac guns, you'll be decimated. So the humans had to, to coordinate fire and knock out the ship in essentially one salvo because they were very rarely uh, still around to fire another salvo. It was pretty brutal. And we need Halo films, damn it. We need decent Halo films. Yeah, we're taking some hits from that dropship, but that's fine. Another one coming in. 
But that's fine. We can absolutely decimate this guy. I don't know if you can destroy them. Oh. Well, look. This guy's dropping in a wraith. Yeah, not 100% sure if you can destroy these dropships. I know, obviously, in Halo t uh, 3 and on, you can. Kinda looked like it was going to go up. We're getting some good hits on it. Yeah, not sure. Unfortunately, we have taken a rather nasty bit of damage here. All right, this is bad. Got all those reinforcements coming. But we can handle them. certainly handle anything these Covenant bastards throw at us. Alright, not bad. Not bad, men. Not bad. Oh, we've got more. Yeah, the ghosts, although they're cool, they're completely outmatched against the Scorpion. Even an early model such as this. Alright. Alright. Swiss cheese. Well, that's the trouble with the Covenant. There's always more. Oh, he's not dead yet. He is now. Let's keep that gun going. Ooh. That's going to hurt. Come on, let's get that gun aimed. There we go. Beautiful. Another one coming in. <laughs> Give him another shell. Lovely. Onwards and upwards, my friends. There's not even going to be anything left to salvage. Ooh, pilot survived. Well, he just took a... 105 mil shell to the chest. I believe that's the caliber. I believe there are 105 shells in the Scorpion. But they are very, very lethal shells. And with this autoloader, we can put out a shell every three seconds, I think. Which is pretty bonkers, to be honest. I don't know what the hell that Banshee was doing. I'm not going to worry about it. Just going to enjoy the fact that it was flying off into space. Maybe he wanted to bug out. Maybe he had enough of Earth. Too much craziness going on, huh? They were probably expecting a nice little tea party. We're certainly getting our money's worth out of this uh, tank. <laughs> Get wrecked. Oh, there's another one. He is also going to space. Looks like he's trying to go back to his carrier. Not on my watch. Mortar tanks. Two mortar tanks. Now, I can't remember if this is the Halo that they added the, uh... Ooh, that almost hurt. <coughs> I think it's Halo 3 where they add a turret onto the Wraith. Alright. We came, we saw, we killed everything. Not bad. <coughs> 